Hello and welcome to another tutorial from the Golden Ribbon. Today is a very special tutorial because we're looking at the first motion graphic tutorial using Blender. I have had many requests over this over my time as a YouTuber. This is probably the most popular request and it's starting with this tutorial. Namely, three persons have asked and who are represented in this tutorial and we have the tenacious Maximus William, who requested motion design. Tim Jones, a very distinguished, well-known and respected Inkscape designer who requested logo animation. Majori Delos Rees Mocha, who hit me up on Facebook on my messenger and said that boy, um, she, her, her access to the internet is very limited and she would like a written tutorial on how to do a basic ribbon so I'm going I just meshed all of these requests into one and it's going to be one tutorial so I've got a lot to cover let's get straight into it so we're in Inkscape because we need to do this ribbon so I have it here and but we're just going to actually redo this and forgive me Tim I stole your picture from Facebook you can give me a more higher definition one but I stole it on Facebook um, because I had limited time, very hectic time for me. And I hope you can find it in your big heart to forgive me. But if not, then you can ban me from Facebook for a little bit. All right, so first up, what we're gonna do, I'm going to duplicate, I'm going to create a new rectangle. And this is about the size. So we're just gonna double click this rectangle and we notice that it's still an object. So you want this into a path. So we're gonna to go to path, object to path. Then we're gonna double click and select these two nodes on the side. Make sure that you have show transformational handles or selected nodes activated. And we're gonna to navigate to here and insert new nodes into selected segments. And we're gonna go to this side, select these two and do the same. Then select these two in the middle, hold shift at these transformational handles that you got from that button earlier. I'm just gonna pull in, great. Next, I just grab Tim here and grab him gently so he doesn't charge me for assault. And I'm just going to create a circle now. With the ellipse tool, hold control and shift to scale up proportionally. We're gonna color this circle black or this deep gray. And then I'm gonna to go to the alignment tool Oh, we find alignment in objects, alignment and distribute. And I'm just going to center it on the vertical and center it on the horizontal. And lift this up in the tool control box area. And we're going to have Tim Jones here just written. And the font I'm using is... The font I'm using is um, PT Serif. So this is what our logo is going to look like, as you saw in the beginning of the video. And this is how we do a basic ribbon. So with this done, what we're gonna do now is just gonna delete everything. And you're gonna wanna copy this with Control and C, and then you're gonna click this button up here, it's create new document from default template. And that will give you a new document, and you're gonna paste it here. Now, when we're using files from Blender and we want to import it from Inkscape because we can actually do that, you want to make sure that the object is a path. Now, we're going to go more in, in depth into what exactly you need, but just know that for now. And we're just going to save it as Tim Jones ribbon. I have mine saved already. And then you can exit. Yeah, close without saving. Now this doesn't have to be for Tim Jones alone, but you can put any picture here as you will see. So let's save this and exit this also. Let's put this over here. I'm gonna open up Blender. Let's just move this here. Okay, so we blend open. I'm going to open up Blender to your first blend because that's where my scene is. But as you open Blender, you'll notice this is what your 
scene will look like. You'll see a camera here, this cube here, and a lamp. Now, just quickly, this is your scene, and I'm panning with my middle mouse here. So we have a camera, a lamp, and an object. So I'm gonna go into that file that I opened up recently. And this is the same thing. We have a camera, we have our object, and we have a lamp. So in this now, what we wanna do is select this, and in Blender, we select with the right click, not the, not the left click, with the right click. And you notice selected because it has this yellow outline across it. And we're gonna to go to keyboard and press delete. Now in order to operate Blender effectively, you need these two peripherals, specific peripherals. The peripheral for your key, for your, meaning your keyboard needs to have a numpad. If it doesn't have a numpad, you have to get an external numpad or get a keyboard with a numpad. Also, in order for to operate this, you need to have a mouse with a middle button as Blender specifically uses middle button controls. So right here is a little guide for your mesh lattice to help you to navigate your objects in 3D space. And this green line represents the Y axis and this X line represents the X axis. So what we're gonna do, we're gonna go to file and I'm going to go to user preferences. I'm just gonna type in screen keys here so that you can actually see what it is I'm doing. So in Adult Screen Keys, I just want to make sure it's activated. It is. Good. And I'm going to go and press N. Or you can drag this button right here. And we're going to select Screen Display. Good. And just scroll this back in. So that you can see in the bottom you're going to see what we're moving so to pan the scene we're using a middle mouse and we're just moving it around notice the middle mouse turns white good all right then so what we have here is that our camera is viewing things from this direction now whatever we want our render to see we have to it has to be in the view of our camera and this is our camera here selected in orange now if we press zero on the numpad it will take us to the direct view of the camera. So when we render, this is what will come out in the render. But we don't want the camera to be seeing our X and Y axis like this. We want the camera to be the line directly to our X and Y axis. So what we're gonna do is that we're gonna change the view by pressing seven on the numpad. And now when we're pressing seven on the numpad, we wanna move our camera to look directly over this lattice that we're seeing here. Now for you, you're using Windows, it will be Control Alt and zero but that is a function I can't use in Ubuntu simply because, or Linux that I'm using right now, simply because Link, um, Ubuntu Linux is specifically only, um, already has a function for those keys, for that key combination. So I had to convert my key combination to a different one and I use Control Alt Zero, which is the normal zero that's above the letters. But for you, it will most likely be Control Alt and z and zero on the number pad. So when you do that now, you'll notice that the camera is fixed to the viewpoint here, with the Ys on the Y axis and the X on the X axis. And I like it this way because it's easier for you to conceptualize as you move your object around. Okay. So now what we're gonna do, we're going to import our ribbon. So we're gonna go File, Import scalable vector graphics and we're going to look for tim jones ribbon and it's going to come very very small it may not even look like you can see it but if you can see it right here and if we scroll our middle button it zooms in i'm going to select this ribbon right here good and it's going to scroll out and it's going to go navigate to object transform and origin and geometry to origin or origin to center of mass and that's going to move this which is the origin where you see our x and y it's going to move it to the center of mass of the object so i'm going to go to object center you're going to go to transform origin center of mass 
good then we're going to press s blender works with key with um shortcuts mostly so you'll have to get used to that i'm just going to press s and i'm going to drag up to scale it up to about here this looks good now we notice that the color is a little bit deformed and that's sort of an unfortunate quirky blender that when we import from SVGs the colors don't remain exactly the same they tend to be a paler color not sure why but we can go through it now in our properties dialog which is on the right hand side we're going to go and we're going to click the tab that has this sphere that looks like this and then we're going to click shadeless and from shadeless we're going to go into the fuse now the fuse is where the color is actually set and I'm using blender render here yeah just for persons who know and this is the color that it has here but we're going to replace it with the color that we had in our Inkscape file so we're going to go ahead and open that file file open recently for Tim Jones ribbon let's click this and I'm just going to open up fill and stroke object fill and stroke and I'm going to select this color that it has here so it looks like my color looks a bit different but it's okay and we're just going to click here and in the hex box under the fuse we're just going to paste it with Control and V and we should get our color good so now that we have our ribbon and color we're going to proceed into moving on to our objects so we need a circle so what we're going to do is that we're going to go to add and in the add we're going to add a mesh and we want this mesh to be a circle now you'll notice that the circle is transparent and I'm just moving the circle on the x-axis with this x arrow y with this y arrow and we're just going to scale it up a bit good notice that it's transparent so what we want to do is that we want this circle to be filled so what we're going to do we're just going to go to tab and that goes us to edit mode and all of our nodes for this circle are selected already and we're just going to press F face and that will give our circle a face so that we can color it in good for the next step we're going to press 0 to come out of the camera mode use our middle mouse button to turn and pan upwards and it's going to lift this up a little higher and then we're just going to press tab and extrude yeah. so we're going to press tab and extrude which is E and after you press E you're going to press Z because we're extruding on the Z axis and we're going to bring this down good just want to add a bit of thickness to the circle behind that looks good and now we can add Tim so we're going to go to file import and we're going to want to add image as planes now this is not automatically um, enabled by default in blender so what we're going to have to do is go to user preferences then we're going to go to add-ons and we're going to type up here we're going to type planes and we want to activate import images as planes and we're just going to save and exit so we're going to add Tim go back to add or go to file and import and then we're going to go to image as planes and we're going to add Tim Jones picture good now this could be any picture but this is Tim Jones picture for now now when it comes up it's just gonna look like a regular square so if you don't want that what we can do is that well it's gonna look like a regular square so we're just moving it so that it's in place don't let the square scare you you'll see an upside down head of Tim right here gonna change this view to a rectangle and it's sort of stretch but you can see that this is Tim and that is just a preview of what's right here so to see this now 
we're going to go to a material and activate our materials down here okay then before we we're just going to go into the next step here we have the we have team right here and we notice we have this gray box around team but we want this box to be transparent if we press f12 which is the image render we'll see that we have this black box or this gray around team and we want to remove that so to do that what we're going to do we're going to go into our material and make sure that our transparency is ticked we're going to click shadeless and that means that the object is not affected by light then we're going to go into this tab here which is our texture tab and we're going to click alpha notice it's become black and then we're just going to bring this alpha down to zero and then we're going to go to back to our material tab and we're going to carry this down to zero let me just go back to a alpha here and just bring it back up again so when we carry up and down we notice that the alpha is inverted so we want it like this so if we press f12 now we notice there's nothing around the circle good so we're gonna go and just bring this down using our origin right here and just going to use our middle mouse button flip it over I'm gonna make it kind of horizontal here and just carry it down as closest to this circle as possible good I think this looks good next we're gonna color in this circle now and we're gonna use the black of his shirt so I'm gonna go back to my Inkscape file let's open up Tim Jones open up Tim Jones um, logo and we're gonna select this black right here let's go to our fill and stroke object fill and stroke and we notice this is the color for the hex decimal down here we're gonna copy this code and we're gonna go to our material tab so let's bring this up it doesn't have a material so we're just going to go to new you notice the yellow ring is around what we've selected we're gonna make it shadeless and we're gonna go to diffuse and paste our code right here control and V and we have what generally looks like the right color good so we have everything lined up here wonderful all right so we're just gonna save this and for the next thing we're going to add our text so we're going to activate our text tool and uh, we can go to shift a or you can go to object and or you can go to add and we're going to add text let's bring the text over here now to edit in the text you have to press tab and tab takes you to edit mode so if anything selected when you press tab that will take you to edit mode so it's going to fit inside there and press tab i'm going to type in him Jones and we're going to change the font so for that we're going to go up here and you're going to see this F and we're going to select the F then I'm going to come down here to font and I'm going to select regular and I'm going to select PTF serif bold but for you you'll have to search for the actual TTF TFF or you have to search for the OTF file and add it so you have to look for it and search for it but I already searched for it so it's here for me good then I'm just going to scale in and let's make it the same black you can find the material down here I'm going to use this one right here Tim Jones okay so we have this logo here so now we need to animate let's bring this down a bit too 
Now for this part now, you have to create a curve for our ribbon to follow as it goes around and flips the seam. So in this one, which is what we have here, which is the one we made before, you notice they have this yellow line here and this is the actual path I created. Now I'm not gonna go through into creating this elaborate path because it takes a bit of tweaking. I'm actually just gonna use this one for the, for the actual edit. But what we can do is that I can show you how to begin this path and begin to start to learn how to navigate this thing on your own. So, so what we're gonna do, we're gonna go Control and A, go to Curve, and we're gonna select Path. And that's gonna give us a straight line right here. Let's lift this straight line up on the Z axis, move it along the Y. Always using the middle button to pan because that helps to direct where we're putting our things here. All right then, so we have this here and if we go to tab to edit, we notice that it has direction. So this is the direction that the path is gonna flow in if we're animating anything along it. And it has nodes. Now the nodes are very difficult to see, but they're there and they're in orange. So if you lift the nodes, we notice that the path begins to bend. Good. So basically, you're going to use these nodes to edit the way the path goes around your object and your base edit has three paths three nodes for you to edit if you wish to add more you press e for extrude and it will add another path so what you're essentially going to do is go around with this path and create the, sh the way you want your ribbon to animate along this path now for us we've already created Mars so I'm just going to move this one over here and I'm going to link this one here press tab so you can see it and you see it's the same path so you have to go around and create the spiral for yourself and that would be a good practice for you to learn the navigational tools of Blender while you figure out how to move this path in 3D space remember your pan and if you want to return to your original view, press 7. Or if you want to go to your camera, press number pad 0. Okay, so it's going to link this one. So I'm going to press Control and L and link. Link object to scene. I'm going to link it to the second scene. Oh, link it to the first scene, sorry. Control L, link to scene 1. Good. And then for this now, what I'm going to do here is that I'm going to press Control and U. Oops, sorry, I'm just gonna press U. And I wanna make this a single user. Good. So if I press Shift and D, it's gonna duplicate it. And then I'm gonna delete this link. So this way, it's not going to interfere with this one over here. Good, so I'm gonna carry this down, this path. on the z-axis, carry it down, see that it wraps around, good, so it looks like it's wrapping around okay, I think this is about good, we may need to scale this in, if you hold shift, like in scape, it will select two objects at the same time, it's going to scale this in a bit, go to zero, this looks like it's covering okay. Doesn't look like it's yeah, it looks like it's covering okay, it doesn't look like it's completely lost. May need to carry this down a bit. Selecting some of these nodes and carry them down a bit. Holding shift to select more than one. Come over. Press tab again, come out of edit mode. Okay, so next we're gonna actually join this ribbon to the path. So what I'm gonna do now is just drag it down, this ribbon. 
Try and get it as close to the path as possible, the beginning of the path that is, which is down here. Select this and the path. And we're gonna go to modifiers, add modifier. And with that, we're gonna go to curve. Oops, we just selected the one one. Select this ribbon. We're gonna go to curve and we're gonna select this dropper tool and then we're gonna look to find the NURBS path. When you see it says NURBS path, we're gonna click and it's going to align itself to this. And then what we have to do is just gently move the ribbon towards the path as best as we can using the Y and Z axis because the X axis is now mapped to the path. So when we move the Z axis, you're gonna notice it's gonna go around. Good. So it's actually following the path now. So if we go zero to go to our camera and then go to G and press X with the ribbon selected, you can actually see it going around the path. But we notice it's not bending. So in order to get it to bend now nicely for us, we'll have to add you have to do something extra. So what we're gonna do here, if it's selected. Yeah. If it the, the path selected, it's gonna disappear slightly and come to the side because it's got the modifier on. So we're just gonna simply click this eye here to get to stop the modifier from activating right now. And we're gonna go to this thing over here. By the way, I'm holding shift while I'm holding the middle mouse button. That will help me to pan in and out. And we're gonna change this to a mesh. So we're gonna go press tab and hit alt and c well you have to come out of edit mode to get this to work press alt and c and we're going to change this curve to a mesh i'll say alt and c again or mesh from curve sorry and that's going to change this into an actual mesh and we're going to get rid of these lines in the middle and hit x and remove the edges. We're going to select these nodes, press F to create a new edge, F to create a new edge. We basically want to get rid of those lines in the middle of the mesh and press F again and that will give us a face with all of them selected. All right. Then with all of these selected, we're going to go and hit W and subdivide and what that does is that similar to creating a new node in between an existing segment in Inkscape, it's going to create new nodes. So let's just zoom in here so that we can see what's happening. So we can see the new nodes right here. Um, to make the object the center of focus of the pan view, you can just hit the Del button in the numpad or the dot and that will center it on whatever you, object you have selected. So we have our nodes here. So basically, we're just going to keep on creating nodes in between and that will help with W and subdivide. And that will help to allow the shape to bend. Because the more nodes it has, the easier it is for Blender to calculate where this bend happens and thus give us more ribbon like effect. But obviously, the more subdivides you have, the harder, the more calculation the computer has to do. So you don't want to go too crazy with this. So if we go back to our, go back with this and go to our modifier and go back to curves and select the nerves path. We notice that it's actually bending now. So if we press zero, go to our camera and we select this and hold G, 
Uh, so in G and X to move along the X axis, we're getting a very, very smooth curve here. Smooth in, smooth around, smooth down. Coming across, it's looking really nice. Uh, if your computer is humming and having difficulty handling it, you may want to take your view off a of rendered and use solid instead. You won't be able to see everything, but you'll make for an easier rendering time on your computer. Good. So we have our shape right here. We have our ribbon. It's going across our path pretty nicely with the curve modifier. We're going to move this text up a bit using the z-axis oops and along the y carry this down great and i think now we can actually move into animating this thing because now let me press zero this is how it looks i'm going to press f2 to see how it looks when it's rendered okay this looks good the only thing is that this needs to have this needs to have um this text right here well, this text needs to come down a bit all right let's press F2 again all right it's looking really good all right notice that the circle behind is not showing out too well so I'm gonna try this Z transparency let's press F12 Okay, showing much nicer now. So you may want to use the transparency for this one instead of the mask. This mask is hiding what's behind it too, which includes this circle. All right then. So the final step is to animate. Uh, let me use a different material for this one for the text. I'm going to make a new material, let's come here and press new, let's delete this one and I'm going to make it shadeless, select this black here, select the color right here, come to Tim Jones and we are going just to paste it right here, good, yeah that looks really good. Alright then, so we have this now, we're just going to animate it. So, the very next step, we need to start moving into animating it over time. This is our timeline, and to animate it over time, we're basically going to make keyframes along this. So, the first thing I want to do is that I want this to start from the beginning. So, I'm going to press G and X with the ribbon activated. And I'm going to bring it down, down here press zero see what our camera looks like so we need the ribbon to come out a little bit lower on the x-axis that is about here so it's going to come up here and then begin to roll over so we want it to start off screen so we're going to come here and we want the x so we're going to go to this here, this box right here in this menu, and we have location, rotation, and scale. And on location, this is X, Y, and Z respectively. We want to move the X because that's what's going to cause the ribbon to displace across this curve. So we want to select the X and we want to have it to have a keyframe. So what we're going to do is that we're going to right, let, we're going to right click on this and insert a single keyframe because we only want X oh this is Z, my apology X is at the beginning, delete single keyframe we only want X so it's at zero now and it will remain at zero until we add another keyframe in the timeline so at around 25 we want it to come up so we're just going to scroll it over you can scroll it here and we see it's moving we want it to come about here by 25 so insert single keyframe here we'll just scale it up so you notice now that as we move in the time 
the ribbon moves great so for this you're basically gonna add keyframes right throughout your composition in order to get the ribbon to go around the object so it's reaching here at 25 frames because this is in frames and by 40 we want it to go a little further so it's going to move along the x-axis a little bit by 40 we want it about here so add a bit more to it it's a single keyframe so if we just play it right here good notice it's gone right around and it's animating great stuff and then we can add another keyframe and just continue the animation to about here at about 60 insert single keyframe let's play it good and then last we can have a last keyframe about 70 and just drag it in about here so a single keyframe great so with this keyframe now it's coming around I think it's a bit higher than the text so let's just lift the text a little bit on the z-axis and bring it down and so we have an animated ribbon so for the next part of it we want to animate this which is the circle with the ribbon so we notice that when we select anything else with the keyframes disappear on the timeline so we have to change this from a timeline to the node editor itself so what we're going to do is that we're going to go to the dope sheet oops wrong one i'm going to come down here and activate the dope sheet and the dope sheet is where all the keyframes are kept and these are the keyframes of animation so as we go scroll through we see the keyframes we're going through them at the top in yellow is the keyframe that controls all key the keyframe that controls all keys underneath its vertical line so this keyframe moves everything underneath it this keyframe moves everything underneath it this keyframe moves everything underneath it so when i click it you notice everything turns yellow if i click this alone it turns yellow also but if i click these alone this is simply this curve right here so if i have another animation that starts at the same time only this one would activate for that for an example of that we're going to start with this and we want it to start with a rotation of 90 degrees along the y-axis good oh forgive me let me just sort this out but just before we do that we want to make sure that wherever this goes this circle this one goes also which is Tim so to do that we're going to select this hold shift and select the circle I'm going to hit Control and P and that's going to pair this Tim which is Tim to the circle behind it and what that does is that wherever I move this circle however I translate it Tim is going to move with it too so we're going to have R and Y and just rotate and we notice that the Tim moves with it, with the actual thing and if you need to see it let's press 0 let's come to the rendered mode and if you look at it you can see it's Tim's here and if I say render let's use material and if I rotate it now you notice that Tim rotates also good make poor Tim dizzy okay so with that we have Tim locked on so what we're going to do next is that we want Tim to be 
rotated along the y-axis so I'm going to start with that insert single keyframe and when the ribbon comes around about here I'm going to add it at 90 here too and when it comes around about about here I want it to start rotating I want it to go to about 360 degrees of our rotation so insert a single keyframe so it comes around and flips while the ribbon flips yeah I think that's about good it's flipping a little bit late so what we want to do is that we're going to look to see where this is and this cir is the circle 001 and those nodes come here so we're just going to carry this back a bit so that it curves a bit more with the actual ribbon so we play it you notice it's curving with the ribbon a bit more if you press G and carry it across it curves good so we're going to go and continue and just curve it round at the end point we're going to add one more keyframe to this curve to this circle and we're going to make it go to about 720 so that when we play it we get an animation where Tim rotates with the ribbon okay for the last part, last part of this now we want Tim Jones to fade in with the animation so what we're going to do now is that around here when the ribbon reaches here about this node we want Tim to be zero so we're going to make the color fade in so what we want to do here we're going to go to make sure Tim is selected with the left click we're going to go to the F or not F we're going to go to this material button right here you're going to select transparency and click it and then what we want to do is that it's alpha 100% now or 1 which is 100% and at this point we want alpha to be 0 and that will mean that is completely transparent and we're going to right, right click and add a keyframe come here and we're going to come we're going to move it along the timeline to where we want it to fade in and we're just going to bring up the alpha and right click again and insert keyframe so it moves from zero to one good so if we play it and then Tim Jones fades in and there we have the logo design for Tim Jones my first blend tutorial so bear with me if it's a little bit long you what you need to keep in mind is that the interface is very tricky and I'll take more baby steps for the next tutorials but for this one you get to see a whole process come through in all the navigation is the hardest part for blender so you really want to just take your time try not to get too frustrated with it believe me i've been there it's not the easiest user interface to lock onto but it's very very powerful when you do so yeah and there's quite a lot more that you can do with this and we can definitely discuss that in future tutorials make sure you check the blog post i'll try and get it out by sunday it's been pretty hectic but i'll try and get this out by sunday and the blog post will cover the written part for the ribbon and also the some of the shortcuts used you know it won't be entire right of the tutorial but you can imagine with something this long it won't be that long it won't be something that i'll be able to do so easily 
thanks for watching if you enjoyed this tutorial be sure to leave a comment if you want to see more like these be um leave a comment in the blog post that would be most handy and helpful but until i see you again get up and design